Hello, people. I'm so happy to be here with y'all. I'm gonna do a little share. I can't see who's here. I have a big black box across my screen. <laughs> so there's that. Um, <clears throat> just giving people a minute to get on and I'm going to share. Um, this post in a couple places. Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. Something went wrong, Facebook. What are you what are you saying? There we go. Hi everybody. Thanks for coming on. Here we go. Okay, now I have it. Now I can grab the link. Actually, just share it. Two places. Welcome everybody. Um, in case this is your first, in case you're a cocktail chat virgin, <laughs> um, this is um, a typing and talking at the same time is very interesting. <laughs> um, this is a cocktail chat where I also record my podcast and Part one is um, we're gonna make a drinky poo, as I like to call them, um, drinky poos. <laughs> we're gonna make a drinky poo together. Um, and then we're gonna talk about what happens when you are bored. What do you do? Because it's funny, I actually, um, I actually uh, was, planning on doing this before this whole corona thing like swept the land um i had it actually scheduled for sunday and that didn't happen um it wasn't i just knew that it wasn't time to do it so i canceled it or i postponed it and um and here we are and uh today's the day <laughs> so um let me just um, get this baby. I'm sharing it in the creation of living group because I love the creation of living group. Okay. Um, so, and if you've never been on a cocktail chat with me, it's a good time. It's a good time for cocktails. <laughs> if you're bored, you know, a good little dose of alcohol is never a bad thing. <laughs> um, if your body's asking for it. Sometimes I've, I've had a, a very nice stretch lately where my body just didn't want alcohol. Um, and um, today I'm like, oh, I love drinking. I, I don't, I, I just, <laughs> that's probably not like appropriate to say, but I'm saying it. I love drinking. <laughs> I love cocktails. You might've figured that out already. Um, and what I wanted to do, you know, a lot of times we'll send out a thing in advance and we'll send out a recipe in advance in case you want to make it alongside of me. Um, I didn't do that today because um, I wasn't even sure what I was going to make. <laughs> so <coughs> I, um, I just sort of grabbed, I, I figured we'd do this like, this is sort of like, um, oh, there's been jokes going around about the quarantini, the quarantine martini. So we're going to make a quarantini. <laughs> and a quarantini is kind of anything you have 
shaken up and poured, if you have it, into a pretty glass. And if you don't, just, you know, into something. <laughs> so it's kind of what you feel like. And I'm actually, Rebecca Hulse, I think is um, maybe watching, I'm not sure. I love you, Rebecca. Um, she had the brilliant idea for me to do a cocktail class. So I'm gonna do actually a cocktail class where we are gonna get on Zoom and we'll give you like a little list ahead of time of what to bring or whatever. Um, or you can just show up with whatever you got in your house. And I'm gonna actually teach kind of the art of cocktailing um, in terms of, I, <laughs> yay, Rebecca's here. Um, and cause like I, I, Rebecca and I were texting the other night and, um, and she was like, Hey, you know, you got any suggestions for me? I don't have anything very exciting around. And I'm like, well, there's a bit of a kind of flavor profile formula. Um, and it's basically in order of, you know, volume, it's like alcohol, <coughs> sweet. Um, so alcohol, sweet, sour, bitter. Um, in that, in descending order. Um, and um, yeah, so it's, it's pretty simple. And I, you said, you said, I need help. That's true. She did say I need help. <laughs> so she had the brilliant idea being the joy of business uh, creator, facilitator, amazing creatress that she is. She's like, why don't you do a class? Um, and I just thought that would be fun because there's a lot of things that I kind of know intuitively about cocktails that I just... I've kind of picked up over the years um, of drinking and going out and tasting things and playing in my own kitchen and stuff. Um, so this is going to be just a straight up cocktail class. Not tonight. That's a, it's going to be another time soon though. I'd like to do it soon because it's fun and we're all at home and let's get on Zoom and drink. <laughs> Come drink with me. Um, so what's on my menu for tonight? Well, I was in the mood for Jinsky. Um, I love Jinsky, and Jinsky is just the Boulder Distillery. Um, this is their version of oak barrel aged gin. Now, oak barrel aged gin is gin. Gin is a clear liqueur, um, if you're not familiar with gin. And it is, um, I, you know what I love about gin? I, I really like um, flavored, um, I like alcohols that have more flavor. Um, I don't do a lot of stuff with vodka, although I will in the cocktail class, I'll talk some about that. But um, but with with gin, gin is actually distilled with herbs a lot of time. Well, almost always with herbs. Um, some version of it's the the classic is sort of juniper, a lot of juniper, um, and then people throw in different herbs with it. Um, so there's different ways of making gin. There's different styles of gin. Um, but that's one of the things I love about it is it has a very distinct herbaceous kind of a flavor, depending on what kind of gin you're drinking um, and what it's made with. And with the Jinsky, it's, um, it's or this Jinsky is just their name brand, Boulder Distillery, which I actually think is the best oak barrel aged gin that I've had so far. Um, and you happen to be able to buy it here in my hometown of Boulder. If we ever open our borders again and you don't live in the U.S., then you can come and buy some. <laughs> come and have a cocktail with me. Um, but um, Jinsky is, so, so basically they take gin, the clear liqueur, and they age it in oak barrels, which is not something that is done normally with gin. It's no, that's normally a whiskey um, bourbon type of a preparation or you know fermentation process. And what happens is it gives the alcohol um, an oaky flavor, which is really cool. So as you've got this with, with oak barrel aged gin, Jinsky, you've got this um, herbaceous kind of thing, gin flavor going and oaky flavor, which if you've done any cocktail chats with me, you know, my two favorite liqueurs are bourbon and gin. So it's kind of like, this is, we should just call this Heather. We should just call this Heather liqueur. <laughs> <laughs> Heather's favorite. Um, so what I did was I just, um, and this is always a little weird because I'd have to like, it's like my boobs and my stuff, you know. So my boobs are going to talk to you now. Um, no, but this is just sort of my like, I did a hodgepodge tonight and I did this on purpose just to kind of be like, hey, what you got laying around, you know. And I got some citrus. I have some Meyer lemons. Meyer lemons are sweeter. 
um, regular lemon, lime. This is a little leftover rosemary simple syrup that I had from a bar's trade actually that we did just a week or two ago. And I've got my shaker with ice and all that stuff. So, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I always like try to get my, <laughs> we need a camera. This is when I need my camera crew. Okay. So I'm gonna take, um, I'm gonna take, uh, and if you have stuff around, so if you have anything in your house and you wanna make a cocktail right now, ask your body, hey body, what would be fun? Vodka, you know, rum, whatever you wanna use. If you have something sweet, um, you, can, you can just quickly, um, you know, you didn't know we were gonna be doing this, or maybe you did, but you could whip up some simple syrup by just plopping um, one part water, one part sugar in the microwave and melting the sugar. Because the thing about the simple syrup is um, that you don't, uh, you, don't um, uh, you don't have the granularness of the sugar, like the sugar actually dissolves in the cocktail, which is kind of important. So that's the nice thing about simple syrup. Um, and then a citrus, you know, if you have any citrus around, so just experiment, you know, I've made so many cocktails that I've poured down the drain, I gotta tell you, and I buy really nice alcohol, <laughs> but I don't care, because it's part of the process of just having fun and playing. Um, somebody just said yummy with some doTERRA lime. Um, I have a ton of doTERRA oils in my liquor cabinet, um, and I also have a ton of um, bitters, um, different types of bitters that have different flavors. Um, so actually maybe, I wonder if I, no, I'm not going to do that tonight. I'll, I'll, we'll do, we'll do that on the cocktail, um, class. Okay. So I'm going to take a shot, which is a, an ounce and a half in us. I don't know how many milliliters that is, but it's an ounce and a half is a standard shot. Oops. I poured two ounces. Oh, well, <laughs> um, but a standard shot is an ounce and a half or whatever that translates into in milliliters of the Jinski. And the thing that I love about Jinski is you kind of, if you get really good alcohol that it has a good flavor to it, you kind of can't go wrong. You can't really fuck it up. So we've got the Jinski. I'm gonna go with, I think I'm gonna do a little bit of Meyer lemon and a little bit of lemon lemon. So I'm just gonna slice my little Meyer lemon here. Um, you can watch down here. So this is the Meyer lemon. It's it's, um, I don't know if you can tell, but it's darker. It's a little more orangey in color. And then here's the standard, you know, just straight up lemon. There's all kinds of lemons. There's, um, there's I love playing with different citrus com um, like possibilities. There's, uh, I found some pink lemons lately. They're sort of like pink lemonade lemons. They're, the color is almost like pink and yellow on the outside. Um, there's one of my absolute favorites, which I look for every time I go to Whole Foods. I haven't found it this year. Bergamo citrus. Um, Bergamo is, it's a form of a kind of like a, I guess it's kind of an orange, but um, they use it in Earl Grey tea. That's the flavor in Earl Grey tea is Bergamo. Um, Bergamo citrus is absolutely heavenly to make cocktails with. It's my favorite thing. And it's available, I've only found it once, like a year ago um, in the winter at Whole Foods because the Whole Foods here has a lot of, yummy different stuff so anyway if you find funky citrus grab i always i get very excited by the citrus section of the grocery store <laughs> i'm like oh there's pink lemons you know or there's um sweet limes sweet limes or key limes there's different types of limes sweet limes are um a little more um well they're just kind of sweeter they're not as they're not as tart um they, all, they look like lemons, actually, they're more yellow, but they're kind of, they are kind of like sweet limes, I guess, so that's how you would describe it. So anyway, I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna do a one half of a lemon. I'm just gonna squeeze it right in here. Oops. Um, oh my goodness. Sometimes you gotta get some leverage on these things. So this is my lemon. Making cocktails. Making boys. cocktails. JD's here. This guy has been, because we're going to talk about creation once we get these cocktails flowing. This guy has been baking like a fiend. It's been amazing. This is the Meyer lemon, so I'm doing a half of a Meyer lemon. I'm putting that in here. 
So this is probably going to be it's a kind of a lot of citrus. Um, I'm just going for something really lemony tonight. Um, but you know, you you may only if you want to be kind of mellow with it. You know, maybe just a half of a citrus to a shot of alcohol is is good. Um, but you can play with it again. Just play and learn. This is my rosemary simple syrup. This I made a while ago. It's uh, one part water, one part sugar. Put it in a pot together, dissolve the sugar, bring it to a boil so it reduces down and it gets thick, and then plunk a ginormous handful of herbs in there. So this was rosemary. You can do thyme, you can do sage. I've got lots of simple syrup recipes. So this I'm gonna put um, I overkill on the sweet. It just, I don't like too sweet cocktails. So it grosses me out. So. I'm gonna do, um, I'm, I see I always ask my body. We'll talk about this in the cocktail class that I do. Um, so I'm gonna go for like a third of a, a third of a shot, um, which is like a, a, a half an ounce basically. Half an ounce, pouring it in here. There we go. And now let's see. So I, this is where I just play, I taste, I see what's going on here. I've never done this particular combination before. I was like, I don't know about gin, ski, and rosemary, but let's see, let's see what happens. Okay, my favorite shaker, if you've, seen, if you've done this before, you know, it's my favorite shaker. <laughs> Cause you don't have to, a lot of times with the metal shakers, the lids, they like slide down on top and they get cold and they're really freaking hard to get off. <laughs> so this one, you don't run into that problem. So I'm going to shake it vigorously. Um, one of the things about the shake is that it not only makes it cold, but it also dilutes the, the ice gets, um, you know, the ice moves around and it dilutes the cocktail a teeny bit. So it adds a little bit of water to it, which just can take the edge off of the alcohol. Um, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So anyway, I like it really cold. I like just I like it really diluted too. It's not I mean it's not really diluted, but I like it, you know, really diluted. Now this I'm really excited about because I love this glass. Anytime I get to drink out of these glasses, I'm very happy. Um, these babies are um, hundred years old and they make my body sing. So I'm gonna go for my favorite martini glass tonight. Um and give it a pour. See, I put too much gin in there, so it's full. <laughs> and there we have it. Um, so I don't know what this is called. It's just called, oh no, we, 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 we named it. It's the Quarantini. <laughs> so <laughs> let's see how the Quarantini tastes. <laughs> Let me see. Cheers, everybody. Whoa, <laughs> it's so full and spilling it. Oh, it's good. Normally I actually taste before I pour just to make sure it's good, but it's good. It's really good actually, really, really good. Oh, yum. Okay, I'm just gonna sit over here and drink, talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> I love Jinski. I haven't had Jinski in a long time. Can you give me a paper towel? Or like two? I'll just leave my <laughs> And get me a wet rag too, because it's all sticky now. This is the thing. I need a set. I really need a set for this damn thing because I uh, I I get I make it sticky, and then I sit here in stickiness while I talk to you, and I'm way too OCD for that. It doesn't really. It doesn't fly. Thanks, Lynn. <laughs> so no, 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 no. Um, Why? Because I have Corona. <laughs> Okay, so that is the cocktail portion of our evening. <laughs> um, and you know, play around while I'm, you know, while we while we keep going. If you want to stay on and play with the topic at hand tonight, um, play around in your kitchen, explore, see what you can come up with. Um, and what's it's really just about what's yummy for you. You know, there's plenty of people that are like, I don't like gin and I don't like bourbon and I want you to make me a cocktail. And I'm like, okay, that's totally doable. So I, I like to explore. I haven't, I think the thing I've gotten the least creative with is tequila. I love a good tequila drink, but, um, but yeah, we'll, we'll play more with that. So 
Okay, um, let me start the recording now. What? Did you order? Huh? Did you order a recording? Yes, I did. Um, okay. Bye-bye. Bye, sweetness. Love you. Um, okay. I'm gonna, my little handheld recorder isn't working, so I'm gonna garage band it up. Um, so cheers while we're waiting for it to open. <laughs> And, um, no, choose. <clears throat> One more sip. <laughs> okay. All right, so welcome to Creating Beyond Reality Cocktail Chats podcast, Fun Times. Um, we are going to talk today about what the hell do you do when you're bored? Um, this is um, actually a topic that I, I was saying before I started the recording. Um, this is a topic that I, I planned to do before the world went into quarantine um, because it's actually a, a fairly common um, thing for humanoids, for people who are seekers and just function in a different way. Um, you know, look from a different point of view than the rest of the world. Um, and what happens is a lot of times we, it's very easy to get bored because, um, well, there's a lot of reasons and we'll go into that. But, um, but now we have this whole quarantine thing happening. Um, if you're listening to this in the future, you know, we're sort of at the height of the, well, we're in the beginning or wherever you are in the world, it depends, but we're, in this time of the coronavirus and March um, 2020 and, uh, you know, um, really looking at, uh, you know, the world is pretty much staying home right now. And um, <laughs> it's, it's uh, you know, I, I've been really enjoying the hell out of it because I always work at home. I work from anywhere. So it hasn't changed a whole lot for me in terms of my business. Um, and... Um, but you know, there's a lot of people that aren't used to being home all the time. I'm not used to being home all the time, but um, you know, it's a different thing for people. And um, if you don't have an online business or you're not very connected into the the webs, you know, um, it's a uh, it can be really you know, and you don't have a lot of stuff going on, and you're used to doing something else. Um, it's like, what the hell do you do with your time? You know, and kids are out of school and. You know, um, I was just telling my kids today, I'm so grateful that you guys are not four years old right now because when my kids were four, it was kind of a day at home with them was a, a bit torturous. <laughs> they're very high energy. Um, and now they're just cool people that I get to hang out with. So um, so we got some extra time together. Um, <coughs> but, you know, um, it's, it's, a, it's a time. So... Um, so, so how, what do you, what do you do? You know, what do you do in times like this? And I've had a lot of conversations, a lot, I've been posting a lot and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And, um, if you haven't seen it, I've started also doing a, um, <coughs> daily, what am I calling it? Daily tools for interesting times. Um, that is a quickie video every day. I skipped it today cause I'm doing this one tonight. But it's a quickie video every day. It goes up on YouTube, goes, you know, here and there um, for um, really, you know, tools that you can use right now because there's a lot of trauma and drama going on in the world. And I'm not going to go into that tonight. I've given a lot of other tools. There's a lot of posts on my personal page, on my business page. There's a lot of, um, you know, there's the daily tools. There's a lot of content that I've put out about kind of how to handle like staying out of the muck, you know, um, and, and staying out of everybody else's universe. But what I want to invite you to tonight is a conversation of creation because humanoids, and if you've never heard that word before, a humanoid is, like I said, somebody who's a seeker, somebody who has a different point of view, somebody who doesn't function from the rules and the regulations of this reality, somebody who is always looking for something different, something more, something greater. And humanoids are um, extremely um, dynamic beings and <coughs> actually really require to be creating. 
And um, we say that you can, like if a lot of times humanoids are obsessive compulsive creators, um, which just simply means like you need actually to obsessively compulsively create. That's not a wrongness. It's something that we're made wrong for by a lot of people um, is this sort of like need to create. Um, it's, you may be called a workaholic, you may be called whatever you're called. Um, I know I've had a lot of judgment in my life from people that are like, would you please just chill it the fuck out? And I'm like, no, I won't, because I can't, because I don't want to. <laughs> I mean, I could, but no, no. Um, I love to create. Creation is vital to me. And what does that mean for something to be vital to you? It means that it actually gives you energy for life. It's, it's like literally like a source for life and living and aliveness. Creation is vital to me. And when I recognized that and I, I was invited to acknowledge that and I got out of the judgment of me that I was in <coughs> about my need to obsessively, compulsively create, it was like, oh my God, this is just who I am. You know, I'm like right now I'm like, how many online classes can I do? Can I do like um, five every day? You know, because <laughs> I love interacting with people. I love engaging with people. I love facilitating. I love creating. And especially right now, this is like, this is the, this is the safe way to talk to people, <laughs> depending on who you are. Um, we were just at the grocery store. That was an interesting adventure. Um, and, you know, so it's, it's, if you, if you haven't kind of gotten into a clip or a rhythm or a whatever of what, you know, how to, like what to do right now, how to handle these times, how to engage with yourself and creation and all that, um, start playing, you know, start, start exploring. And um, some of you guys are on the, um, the Be Different, Stay Weird program with, um, with Dane here. Um, that started today, it was absolutely amazing. Um, and he talked about, you know, like, what do you, what do you enjoy? What do you like to do? And, um, and like, go do that, you know, cause right now the joy of being alive, the joy of living is actually like the most valuable gift that you can give to the world. Truly the most valuable gift that you can give to the world. Really, I would say anytime, but especially right now is actually being joyful, being alive, creating, living your life, doing things that are fun and joyful for you. Everybody's worried about the impending this and that and this and that, you know, right now, chances are if you're watching this or listening to this, like you're okay, you know? So what if you turned it up and you started to have more fun and what is fun for you to create? And that may, you may not know what that is or you may, and you may just, may just be time to choose it. Oh, okay. You know what I did with this cocktail? I, I just totally sneakily I shaved a little lemon rind and <laughs> lemon rind into it just gave it a little bit of bitterness um a little bit of something something see I spiced it up my cocktail was already boring three sips in I needed to change it <laughs> I needed to add to it <laughs> I needed to make it more lively <laughs> and my nails and my glass match so we know that all is well in the world because my nails and my glass match. And my toenails, actually, too. I'm not going to do yoga right now so you can see my toenails, but they are the same color. Because I am OCD, my nails and my toenails, they're always the same color. <laughs> actually, not always. Sometimes it's good to mix it up, you know. But I like to color coordinate my feet and my hands. <laughs> um. So... So now what is, um, so what, what are some, oh, I, I know it. I wanted to say, you know, with this whole thing about being, um, being OCC, being an obsessive, com no, yeah, an obsessive compulsive creator. Um, when you are an obsessive compulsive creator by nature and you really kind of require to create in order to be happy, I require to create in order to be happy. I will say that right now. Um, it's not. I don't see it as needing something outside of myself to be happy. I am, I know how to be happy. I know how to be happy, whatever's going on. Um, I know how to choose happiness. I know how to choose joy. Um, thank God. And if you don't, then 
get yourself to an access class. There's lots of them happening online. Um, I'm doing tons of them online these days. Um, and because that's number one, and we could do a whole thing about that because um, if happiness isn't a choice for you, um, then this time right now will really fuck you up because if you, if you are looking and waiting for something outside of you to make you happy, um, there's not a whole lot in the world right now that you can look to to make you happy. You're, you're going to need to do it. <laughs> you're going to need to learn how to choose it um, if you'd like to have that. And um, so one of the things that I've learned is that creation makes me fucking happy. Um, being engaged with other people makes me happy. Um, and so I do it and I do it a lot. So obsessive compulsive creator, you need to create in order. Creation is vital to you. What happens when you don't, when you are OCC, you're an obsessive compulsive creator and you don't create is you will end up that, that energy for creation. It has to go somewhere. And so what ends up happening is you end up creating crap. You become an obsessive compulsive creator of crap. Um, you start creating crap. And um, everywhere you turn, everywhere you look, crap. <laughs> and um, that's, you know, that's no fun. Because um, we basically, what happens is we like use our creative capacities against ourselves. That sucks. Um, a lot of people do that. A lot of people do that. Like that's a big part of addiction and is like this intense need to create nowhere for it to go in this, um, in this world. No, no context for it in a way. And then, okay, well, I'm going to create a lot. I'm going to be like a brilliant creator of crap in my own life. Well, what else is possible? So, I am thirsty, not just for my quarantini. <laughs> I just think that's so funny. It's quarantini time. Um, anyway, <laughs> see, I also know how to make myself laugh. <laughs> Even if you're not laughing with me, I don't care because I'm making myself laugh. <laughs> And maybe I'm making a fool out of myself, which makes me laugh even more. Because <laughs> I don't really know what that is anyway. So, <laughs> um, Anyway, I digress as, as I do. Um, so, um, so, what's, so, what do you, so what's the, you know, let's talk creation. Um, creation can, so everything that you've decided that creation is, will you please destroy and uncreate that? Right, wrong, good, bad, all nine, pock, pod, shorts, boys and beyonds. And if you don't know what that was, that was the access consciousness clearing statement. Um, and um, basically a um, big magic wand that deletes a lot of energy that just is sort of in the way of you having the joy of you um, and having the ease that is true for you and available to you. So, um, so destroy and create what you think creation is. Um, because creation is actually, um, it's, well, creation is choice, really, is what it is, and choice is creation. Um, creation is where you're choosing every single day, like, this is my reality, this is the energy that I would like to have, this is what I would like to play with. And right now, for fuck's sake, you know, the world is, there's a lot of intense stuff going on in the world, there's also this totally different reality that's being created right now. And I love all the posts circulating about the dolphins in Venice and, you know, all these different things that are going on with the pollution in China, like how fast the earth is healing with all of us kind of in semi-silent mode. Um, it's amazing. And it's, it's such a, it's such a different, um, different way of, 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 uh, of creating. Like it, it, it's like this, it's like the earth is alive with creation right now. The earth is healing itself. It's creating itself. The earth is creating itself every day. Are you creating your life every day? Are you creating your future every day? Are you creating your business and all of that every day? And your business is just simply 
the, the adventure of living. It's your business is just your life and living. It's not um, the thing that you do for money. You know, if, I mean, and that's the thing, I'm, I'm so grateful for that because right now a lot of people have been laid off and they've been, you know, whatever, there's all these different things going on with people's jobs and stuff. Um, <clears throat> and if you see, um, if you see business as that, you know, like this, a lot of people are like, I don't have a business. I have a job. Well, okay. Your job is part of your life is your business. Your, your life is your business. And if you look at it from that perspective, then everything that you do, including me making the cocktail, including me going to the grocery store with my children, including whatever, it's all part of the business of live of the creation of living. And, um, I acknowledge that like, there's no separation in my world of like, Oh, I need to work now. Or, Oh, I need to, I mean, sometimes I do need to sit down on my computer or whatever. Um, but it's not from a sense of like, I need to go to work. It's just, this is what the business of my life and living requires right now. Oh, the business of my life and living right now requires that I take a shower, <laughs> you know, or that I go for a walk or that I, you know, clean my closet, which is, Maybe I'll do a Facebook Live about cleaning my closet. <laughs> I mean, shit, you know, like we got nothing to do. No, that's not actually true. I got a lot to do, um, including cleaning my closet. But that's a story for another time. That's a that's one of those projects that's been hanging over my head. I'm like, now I have time. <laughs> I'm here. Me and my closet. We're gonna we're gonna have some communion. <laughs> oh my goodness. <coughs> I just inhaled my quarantini. <coughs> Wrong pipe. Wow. Quarantini. <coughs> it's not a good thing for the lungs. <coughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Now to talk. <coughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> we can do this. Um, so, um, so when you acknowledge that your business is everything, then you're bus you're not out of business right now, <laughs> you know, no matter what's going on in your life, you're not out of business right now. Um, it's okay, cool. The world is changing. And one of the, th my favorite all time quotes, um, from Gary Douglas is the, um, the only thing Gary Douglas is the founder of access consciousness. If you don't know who that is, he's an I mean, wow, <clears throat> such a brilliant man, such an amazingly phenomenal brilliant man who has empowered, you know, millions of people in the world and I'm so grateful um, and brought the tools of access consciousness to all of us who are playing with it and <coughs> still got the quarantini in the throat. Um, but um, one of the things that he says is the only thing a successful business requires is change. And how cool is that? Because there is a lot of change going on right now. There's a lot of change in the world right now. So if the only thing that your successful business of your life requires is change, well, dang, change is in like very unlimited supply right now, <laughs> you know? And um, the world is changing um, and, um, the, you get to change right alongside of it. You get to change right alongside of it. Um, and you get to, you get to choose what that looks like. You get to choose how much change you have and how much change you don't have. So if you're, you know, if you're bored, if you're stressed, if you're worried about finances or whatever right now with what's happening with the economy, it's like, you know, you can, the way that you can create a lot of movement in your life and in your business is by choosing a lot of change right now, choosing a lot of change. And <clears throat> as you do, um, you bring in, every time you choose to change something, you bring in all these new energies, you know, and that can be, I mean, I love it because Gary's so pragmatic and he just, he says, you know, do you change your underwear when you need to? <laughs> it's such a basic question, right? Like it's, I mean, it's a funny question, but it's a basic thing that we do. We don't think about it. If you need to change your underwear, you do, you know, or maybe you don't, but 
I'm not gonna go there. <laughs> We'd have to have a lot of drinks to even think about that, but never mind. <laughs> Pock and pod. Um, but um, I'm just kidding. Um, but but if you need to change your underwear, you do, hopefully. And I do, I'll just say that, I do. And um, <clears throat> what if change could be as simple as that? Just like, oh, something needs to change right now, I'm gonna change it, you know? But what happens is we make, we make things so significant we make them so, um, so significant and so, um, so, um, like, like change is such a big deal, you know, and change in this reality is really one of those things that's like, oh my God, you know, like people don't, people like try to stave it off, you know, but change is like, I love, I change my business all the fucking time. I change my business every day, you know. I'm very, um, very dynamic with how much I change things. And, and that's something that other people might judge me for. I don't care. I love that sense of aliveness in my business and in my life. And so change is like, it's, it's, it's also vital to me. Um, <clears throat> and so... So change is creation. Change is choice is creation. Um, choice is when, when you change something, you're choosing to do something different. And whenever you choose something different, you are creating. Now, creation can also look like, hey, get out those art supplies. Hey, bake. You know, like I, <laughs> I'm so naive sometimes. It's so funny. So we're, we just went to the grocery store before this. And, um, my son, Jaden, has been creating a ton. It's been really cool to see how many kids are, you know, what they're doing with all of this. And Jaden has been baking, like, every day. And so we went to the store to get some baking, you know, groceries and baking supplies. And, um, and he, um, the flour is all gone. <laughs> Our stores actually have food in them. But the flour is gone. The, sh the flour shelves are as empty as the toilet paper shelves. <laughs> and I went, oh shit, right. It's like everybody thinks they're going to have to be like baking bread or something, you know. <laughs> like, <laughs> I forget how people function. The people are like, oh my God, buy the flour, Armageddon, you know. Um, I'm like, shit, man, my 12-year-old wants to bake. And your crazy ass bought all the fucking flour my 12-year-old can't bake. <laughs> That's no cool, no, no fun, that's not cool. Um, so anyway, we'll see if we have some here and we can, you know. But that's the thing is I don't get upset about anything. It's like, I don't need anything, you know. I love my life, I love what I have, I love what I create. I don't need anything. And when you get to that place where you don't need anything, you can actually have everything. And how do you do that? Well, by creating. And recognizing that your capacity to create it's your greatest wealth because in this time right now, <clears throat> you know, we have all these crazy things going on in the world. And if you are, if you are, you know, sort of trusting your, um, you know, your, your income or your whatever, if you're trusting it to other people, um, if you're, um, you know, uh, putting it in the hands of other people, that's not a good idea, you know, and it, it's never a good idea. Um, that doesn't mean that you can't have communion and creation with people. But when you know that you can create anything and when you are willing to create anything and when you do create anything and you, you trust your capacity to create anything, that's your greatest wealth. You don't need a security, a stockpile of money. You don't need um, all the things that we think we need. You don't need that. You have the greatest wealth that there is, and that is your capacity to create. And you can use it. I mean, shit, I use it with my cocktails. You know, I use it with everything. Um, and there's a joy of that. There's a joy of creation that comes when a huge part of it is actually um, not needing to get anything right, you know? Cause like I said, I, I dump out really good cocktails all the time, you know? And I'm like, shit, that was, you know, some really good alcohol that went into that. But 
Um, it's okay, you know? I don't think, I don't actually think twice about it. I don't ever think, oh my God, that was expensive. I, you know, like, I can't pour this out because this is a $50 bottle of bourbon, you know? Um, I don't ever go there. It's like, okay, cool. Next, you know? Um, and that allows you to create like never before. And <clears throat> it also allows you to stay out of that sense of boredom. Because boredom is, boredom comes from, I mean, well, let's put it this way. When you're not creating, if you're a humanoid and if you're a creator, when you're not creating, and whatever that means if you're a creator, because you might be like, I'm not a creator, but you probably are if you're listening to this. Um, but but when you're creating, um, you're, you're engaged with the universe, you're engaged with the creation of miracles, you're engaging the greatest superpower that you have, which is called choice. Um, you're engaged. You're engaged and engaging with the world. Um, and I don't mean other people, and that could include other people, but I just mean like you're engaged with the universe, really, um, in the in the process of creation, in the energy of creation, in the flow of creation. And that is one of the most nourishing energies that we can have. And, and so, so what happens is you're choosing, you're creating, and, um, and again, this can look like you're painting a painting, you're doing a drawing, you're moving your body as a, as a form of creation. Maybe you're, you know, if you have flour, you could bake, <laughs> um, you know, or whatever it is for you. Maybe you like to knit, maybe you like to read, maybe you are having a conversation with somebody, you know. Um, I love, I've been really enjoying every, pretty much every day having a chat with at least one person just for the sake of having a chat, which I never do. And lately it's been like every day there's one person in my life that I don't talk to a lot, but that I love and we have a chat and that's been amazing. It's been such a gift. Um, and so, <clears throat> so, you know, there's that, um, there's that, uh, you know, just creation can look so many ways. And so, but, but when you have that energy moving in your world, there's probably going to be more joy. There's definitely more choice. And boredom is not a thing. Boredom is, it ceases to exist, you know. And we see these, I mean, I've been loving the, um, the people on their balconies in Italy and they're, you know, singing together or they... Like I saw one last night a video where a guy had his keyboard out there, like his electric keyboard, and um, or my amazing friend Mikey Delara, um, check him out on Facebook. It's Mikey D L. Um, he set up a um, um, like an online, like a Facebook Live uh, to um, to uh, uh, make music to play, do like a concert. That was the word I was looking for. He did a concert online last night um, from his garage, I think it was, um, playing guitar and singing. And he's a, he's a musician. He, he writes his own songs and amazing musician, really fun, great voice, really just fun. So he did a live stream last night, a concert, you know, that was so cool. And, and actually he did it twice. Like he, he went, he did it to play a couple songs, went away, came back and he was like, fuck it, I'm going to do more. So it's really, and there's so much of that showing up right now. Um, and what I love about it is it's like, it's not about getting it right. Like you don't have to get anything right. Um, and when you go, when you're looking to get something right, when you're looking to get creation, right, that's fucking boring. You know, that's when things get really boring because you have to measure yourself constantly against this standard of, you know, what works and what doesn't. And, um, that's boring. You know, um, it, for humanoids, we don't care about right and wrong we think we do, um, but we don't actually. Um, it's it's a, really a bit of an irrelevant conversation for us. Even if you think it's like one of the biggest things in your world, it's probably just because somebody taught you that you needed to be right or you needed to not be wrong or you needed to always be wrong or whatever. Um, so we grew up around these energies and seeing these things and, um, you know, and then it's like, ugh, you know, so... Um, but if you were if you were to just start to play like 
I, I remember when Jaden, my son, was um, my baker. Um, my At the moment, my baker. Who knows? Tomorrow he might be like, I'm never going to bake again. Um, hold on one second, because I have this beautiful cocktail sitting right here in front of me. And it's like, excuse me, could you please? I'm getting bored. Could you please pour me down your the correct tube in your throat? <laughs> Not the incorrect one. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I'm so, I'm funny to me. I don't know if I'm funny to you. I don't care. I'm funny to me. <laughs> Crack yourself up. That will save you in, in Armageddon. <laughs> Make yourself laugh at least once a day, <laughs> if not 85 times. <laughs> um, anyway, where was I? Oh, okay. So Jaden used to come into the kitchen and, um, and he'd come in here and he'd, he'd get a bowl and, um, and he'd open the fridge. I mean, he was, I don't know, maybe four, five, six, I don't know, you know, it all kind of blurs together, but he'd come in and he'd be like, mayonnaise, salad dressing, flat, like he'd just start pulling all this stuff off the shelves, out of the fridge, whatever, and he just put it into this bowl. There was no purpose to it. There was no, he wasn't going to eat it. Like, you know, he was putting like gross shit together, you know, it was, Worcestershire sauce, mustard, you know, stuff that he never eats, you know, and stir it, and he'd stir it up, and he'd get it all mixed up, and then he'd just leave. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, that is just, like, that's creation for the sake of creation, you know? It's like, so what can you create just for the sake of creating it? And if you, maybe you've been wanting to do a Facebook Live, you know, and you've been wanting to connect with people in that way, Fucking do it, you know? I mean, I've done, I have probably done, I don't know, at least a thousand Facebook Lives. Um, Cause I, I, for a long time, for years, I did them every day um, in a class format. I still do them almost every day um, for years. And so I've, I, yeah, I've probably done more than a thousand Facebook Lives. Um, and, um, but I, there was my first one that I ever did, you know? There was also my first video that I ever made years ago. I mean, probably, God, when did I start making videos? Um, I was, I'm like, I was living in my townhouse. It was probably 10 years ago. Um, and I just, I went, okay. And I just recorded a video and I didn't even watch it. And I didn't have makeup on. I think I had a hat on. I looked like shit, you know? I just did it. I was like, I'm gonna make a video and I'm gonna upload it, and that's it. I'm not gonna watch it, I'm not gonna censor it, I'm not gonna judge it, I'm not gonna assess it, I'm gonna upload it. And I did. And that's how I started doing YouTube videos, and then I started doing Facebook Lives, and with Facebook Lives, I was like, well, fuck, I don't know. Let's just see how this goes, you know? But the thing is, is that I didn't, and this is more and more the case all the time, I didn't have a need ever to get it right. Um, and maybe I had some need. I mean, I still, you know, there are still my, like where I'm like, oh, I want to get like, I want to contribute or I want it to be good or, you know, but really I'm just like, I know that the only way you can really get anything right is if you just be you. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, it's like, guys, like, I, I mean, the thing is, is right now, right now there is, it's such a time right now where one of the biggest gifts of this time that I'm seeing is that nobody really, well, a lot of people are getting really clear on what's true for them, on what's really important to them. And that's one of the things that happens in these moments, you know, is where people go, oh shit, okay, hold on a second here, you know. And I mean, I'm seeing even my children, like my teenage children, choosing that where they're like, Hey mom, let me help you. Hey, let me take like taking the trash out without being asked and telling me that I love that they love me. And you know, like being really kind, amazing beings. And it's not that they're not usually, I mean, they are at their, you know, as when they're being, um, but they also act like teenagers, you know, that's gone right now. Um, and we're just in this space of like, gratitude, you know, it's like, fuck, we're not dying, you know, um, gratitude, you know, and, and really being present with what's, 
what's valuable? Like what's, what's really true for you, you know? And, and hopefully, um, when you get down to it, um, you don't like in those spaces when we all, the whole world becomes in a way, it's almost like the whole world becomes a little more vulnerable and, um, you know, is sort of going, wow, shit, man, there's shit that we can't control. Um, <clears throat> you know, people respond in very different ways to that and people freak out. That's part of why a lot of people are freaking out. But if you're here, you're probably not doing that to the degree that most people are, or you would be, you would have shunned me a long time ago because I am way too happy right now for what's going on in the world. Um, but you, you, we, it's like all the shit falls away in these moments, you know? And then, you know, what would it take to really take that forward with us? Like I look at what's happening with the earth and I'm like, okay, are we going to go back to polluting? Like, are we going to actually choose whenever this is, you know, changes and this is like, we can be engaged, you know, in the world? Are we going to go back to business as usual? And I don't, for me, I'm like, whatever the fuck it takes, I am not, uh, that's not, no, I'm not going to allow that, you know? Um, but, but the point is that these are the moments when we get really real with ourselves, you know? And um, so perhaps this is a better time than any, than ever for you to jump off cliffs that you might have normally not jumped off of. For you to be like, you know what? I'm going to fucking make a video. I'm going to do a Facebook Live. I'm going to paint. I'm going to do a drawing. I'm going to call somebody that I haven't talked to in a long time or, you know, make amends or, you know, like be kind to my body today or, you know, cause we actually have the space in the world. Like you have the space. We all, most of us have the space in our lives to actually do that. And, um, and like in ways that we don't sort of normally, you know, and I'm, so incredibly grateful for that space right now. And so, so, you know, what is, what is true for you? And if creation was really about you having fun and you enjoying yourself and, and, and not being bored, because how could you be bored? Oh my God, you're you. Like there's a million things that you can do at any moment. And most of us are so fucking busy in our lives that, you know, when things are sort of business as usual, um, it's like, wow, you know, like this is a really cool time to use to our advantage, you know, and, and what can we collectively create? Um, all of us through the choice of creation to really create a different future. And I, I found this quote yesterday that I just love um, from Dane here, um, where he said that, um, let me see if I can remember it. He said, um, miracles, no, he said, consciousness has a way of dropping miracles into the lap of people that are creating a future. Consciousness has a way of dropping miracles into your lap when you're creating a future. And that is not to say that miracles are something that are bestowed upon us. They are not. They come from our choices. But that's the thing, is that when you're creating a future, you're choosing, you know? And what is creating a future? I mean, that's in a way a whole other, other conversation, but it is, in short, the creation of a future is, is, is actually creating the life and living that is true for you. And, and it's like, if you're freaking out about money, you know what, is it even yours? You know, what can you create? Um, there's a whole new world birthing right now. Are you going to be part of the birthing of a new world? Um, and use that and use that as a, you know, a way to create money. Uh, or are you going to backslide with the rest of the world and, you know, shrivel up? Um, those are choices right now that we all have to be making every day, all day long. And, um, and truly, if you're engaged in the creation of a future and you're choosing what's true for you, what's fun for you, what's light for you, what's enjoyable for you, what's joyful for you, no matter what, no matter what, how, no matter how crazy somebody might tell you that you are, if you are choosing it, then 
there is a way that you are daily, daily engaging the miraculous. You are engaging miracles. And that is, it's so brilliant um, to, to be in the flow of that. And I'll tell you from my own experience, the more I create, um, and for me, a lot of creation is business. Like it's, it's, I love, like business is really my primary creative playground. Um, I love creating business. Love it, 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 love it. Um, <laughs> so, you know, that's really fun for me. It's more fun than baking and stuff like that. You know, I'm not so much of a like cook and stuff like that. I do, I am actually a great cook and a great baker when I want to be. Um, but I prefer to just make cocktails usually. <laughs> um, but, um, but, uh, but whatever you're, so, so, so start to get curious about, you know, what is, what is creation for you? Um, what is, how is creation vital to you? Like is creation vital to you? And if so, what can you choose to be creating a different future, um, for you and for the world? And a huge part of that right now is staying in the question and in the choice and the possibilities of what's actually available rather than the, you know, trauma and drama of the rest of the world. And it is truly your choice every moment. Um, and in a way, we have to be more present than ever right now because the downward slope is very steep. You know, if you slip and fall, that downward slope is very steep. And it's not to say that you can't get yourself back, but I personally have been like, you know what? I am not even going to go there. And it has never been so easy in a way to not go there because I am not gonna slide down that cliff. That's not my reality. That's not my future. That's not the future I came here to create. Um, and we don't have to know what it looks like. We don't have to know how. We don't have to get it right. Um, we just have to choose and start creating and, and please get curious about what that is for you. What brings you joy? What brings you joy? So, um, on that note, um, I think we'll, we'll end there and just really, you know, please know that this, this conversation is incredibly pragmatic and it can seem like it's not because I'm tossing out a lot of questions. And if you're not used to asking questions, you may not think that questions are pragmatic. You may be like, tell me what to do and I'll do it, you know? Um, but questions, every single time you ask a question, you open up possibilities for something greater. And um, that is um, more, I mean, we, it's so required right now. Um, for us to create a different future is, is like one of the big ways that we will do that is through our questions. So it's, it's, it's more critical in a way than ever to be, to be engaged in the, you know, the curiosity that you be, um, in wondering what else you can create. And I mean, even today we had this amazing creation meeting and like this amazing creation popped that I am so excited to share with the world. Um, not going to tell you what it is just yet, um, but it's really cool. Um, and it was, it was a result of asking a lot of questions. Um, and, um, and so, you know, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's a different way of creating with these tools of access consciousness and questions are, fuck, I cannot imagine not having questions right now and not having choice and not having creation and not knowing that I know and knowing what I know, I can't imagine it. Um, so anyway, um, I wanna invite you guys to a few things. Um, if you would like more of this, um, tomorrow in the United States, it's Thursday night right now, 7 p.m., tomorrow at 10 a.m. In, um, in Boulder, um, well, online, but I'll be in Boulder, um, we are going to be starting a three-day creation masterclass called the Business Done Different. It's a joy of business masterclass where we really dive into some dynamic conversations and tools and whoa, like, and I am 
I don't know that I've ever been so excited about a business done different class um, because this is um, this class is going to we are going to take everything that's going on right now and we are going to fucking use it and we are going to create with it. We're going to explore revenue streams. We're going to explore creation and extrapolation in ways that we never have. Um, and that is happening on Zoom. So you can join us from anywhere in the world. Um, it's not happening. I'll be in Boulder, but nobody else is going to be here with me. Um, everybody's going to be on Zoom and everybody who's coming is ready to fucking create. So that is available if you would like to join us. Um, I am also doing, I have a lot of online, you know, just like Zoom class, like, you know, one-time classes or whatever coming up. Um, and um, at the end of April, we just changed the dates. Um, I'm going to be doing a foundation class online um, that is normally not available online. Um, the foundation class is the toolbox um, that everybody requires to create something different um, and my point of view. And um, normally um, we do not facilitate that class online. You have to actually go and be in person with somebody to take it. Um, they have made an exception through the end of May and I will be facilitating it online starting April, I believe it's 24th. Um, so um, that's available too, it's a four day class going to be fucking amazing um and you're invited to that as well um all of it's on my website i don't think we've changed the dates for foundation yet i think it's right now scheduled for the 27th of march but it's going to be at the end of april instead um stay connected on my website heathernichols.com you can see all the upcoming stuff um there's a form at the very bottom of each page called musings you can fill it out and get on the newsletter list um also, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you have not, I'm going to be doing daily YouTube live videos from there. I'm doing daily short Facebook lives right now at 2 p.m. Mountain, no, 3 p.m. Mountain Time every day, um, which is 2 o'clock Pacific and whatever that is in Europe. I think it's right now it's 8. No, I don't know what time it is. I can't do the math. Um, but it's, no, it's, it's 10 p.m. Europe time right now, and then it'll be an hour later after next weekend but um anyway quickie videos on this page heather nichols cf um and on youtube live so if you would be so kind um i'm actually trying to get to a thousand subscribers on youtube and we're very close i think we have 9 30 right now or something um to go to heathernichols.com slash youtube um, that'll forward you to my YouTube channel and subscribe. Once I get to a thousand subscribers, I'll be able to do YouTube live videos as well and just reach more people um, that are YouTube, you know, the YouTubers of the world. <laughs> um, so thank you so much, everybody, for being here. Um, please know that I am here during this time. There's a lot of access consciousness facilitators that are here and available during this time. Please make yourself available for yourself and for other people. Like, connect with people, be present with people, chat with people. You know, we have time right now as a world. I mean, it's amazing the gift of the time and the space that we have. Let's contribute to each other in ways that we never have. Let's create a different future and watch those miracles drop into our lap from the choice that that is to create a different future. It is truly up to us in ways that it has never been before. Never been before. And I'm actually quite excited about what's going on right now. Um, and um, I, as, a, as, a, as a planet, um, the earth is healing and there's a different space opening up and there's a different possibility for all of us. And all you have to do is choose it. All you have to do is choose it. So if you want to come and jump um, jump on with us tomorrow. Um, it's going to be a rocket ship. Um, you can find that at heathernichols.com slash BDD Boulder. And I adore all of you. Thank you so much for you, for your presence, for being here and for being you. And um, watch out for my cocktail class too, because that is coming down the pike very soon. We will play with mixology. <laughs> happy, happy day or night, wherever you are. Thank you for you. I adore you all and hope to see you, hope to see you somewhere in the world soon. Truly. Bye.